recording. It records the, the video, I'm pretty sure, and the audio. The video froze because the internet in my basement sucks, apparently. <laughs> but you're still here. You can still hear me. There you are. Yep. Yeah, we don't have a we don't have a name. We don't have anything. We don't really have a, a set format yet. We're just fucking yet. around. And, yeah, yet. Maybe we'll record yeah. this and throw it up on YouTube and just let shit happen. Yeah, and it's like I and like I just said, you know, be- before we went on air, I just said how funny it is that you know the the different dynamic between us. Because look, I've got comic books and shit on the background. You've got your sports memorabilia and jerseys hanging. You got a pool table and your fucking happening man cave. Yeah, and I've got I've got a small corner of my basement that has kit ba- fucking boxes of clothes and kids shit all over it. It's just it's exactly the opposite in every <laughs> way. It's so funny. Um. And so, even, I mean, even like down to our, our lives, we've been friends since when, would you say? I don't know, 94? When was that? Was that fifth right. grade? Uh, 94, let's see. 10 years old, that puts you, what, like fourth grade? Fifth, yeah, fifth grade. Yeah, right? fourth, fifth grade. Yeah. Yeah, sounds about right. Yep. And just, you know, different different journeys, but shit, we've been best friends ever since. And yeah, man. you're a... Uh, you're a state trooper. I do fucking customer support for payroll software. Uh, you're you're you know six foot five. Is it now? <laughs> yeah. In- now, yeah. yeah. I've yeah. I haven't grown any since. Uh, I remember it was. I remember it was six foot four for a while, and then it was like yeah. no, 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 I'm six five now. Oh, okay. It's official. Then, yeah. It's on the license. So. Oh, okay. That's how you know it's real. Yeah. Yeah, you go to the gym on a fucking time. You do jujitsu. I uh, I drink a lot of beer and I read comic books. Uh, you're more, you know, conservative Republican, I guess. I'm more liberal Democrat. It's just every aspect of it is so different and it's so funny. And then yeah, we've every time we talk. I mean, you you know, you're a good talker. I love to talk. We always yeah. just kind of come together. We find a common ground in every fucking thing we discuss, and it's just funny how it works out. So maybe other people will find it entertaining too. I can't see why not. Yeah, of course. I thought for a long time, because even because again, I I don't. Yeah, you're a fucking big jock. I don't know shit about sports, uh, even though we'll cover the Panthers beating the Jets this weekend. Oh um, boy! <laughs> hey, we're but, rebuilding, uh, all right? We're yeah. Rebuilding. Again. My whole life rebuilding. Yeah. But I always thought it was funny because, like, listening to you and you know our friend Piero, for example, and. Just you guys bullshit about sports, and even if I didn't know shit about sports, it was so funny just sitting back and listening to you. And then now there's podcasts where you know everybody and their fucking grandmother has a podcast, so yeah, why oh, not yeah. try to try to talk and bullshit and just you know entertaining, and the the cream rises to the top. So That's it. I always thought that was funny shit. Yeah, and I don't know, like I told you too, I was thinking about some kind of format we could do. Maybe we just bullshit about what's going on in our lives for the first half hour, and then yeah. maybe the second half hour we'll cover one of the the many topical topics going on right now. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. So. <laughs> Let's get after it. So, yeah. So, like I was saying, too, I've been up since about 4 o'clock this morning because I have five dogs. I have five giant dogs. Mm. And mm. then my wife just brought on three more puppies to adopt. We adopted one of them out. Two of them we're still looking for homes for. Tomorrow night we have to go into Manhattan, or we got we got to go to Hell's Kitchen tomorrow night to give them to get them uh, shots and vaccine. Why Hell's Kitchen? That's just where they do. Well, that's that's where the um, what the hell is it called? The rescue that we used oh. is is out of the city. So they traveled over to Tappan Zee Bridge. They brought the puppies to us, and we adopted one to the the family across the street. And we've still got two. But man, these fucking dogs! So you have seven out. dogs in your house right now? Yeah. Yeah. Seven. Yep. Oh, the, God. The, the five, it's like the five, wait, now we've got the routine. The five are all grown and they're old. They're lazy dogs. We let them out in the backyard once in a while. These puppies just throw a wrench in the whole dynamic, man. They're demolishing yeah. my yard. They're knocking yeah. over plants all over the place. We've got to keep them in the cage most of the time. We try to let them run through the house, but they just cause all kinds of fucking mischief. What oh, kind man. of dogs are they? They're uh, they're lab mixes too. So they they're two uh, black dogs. They look like they would fit in with the rest of my pack, no problem. So obviously my yeah. wife is like trying so hard to hang on to them. Scarlet too, my daughter. She's she immediately is like, Daddy, we keep them. We keep them. No, no. Why we do, do I not. have a feeling when we talk a year from now, you're gonna say, you know, me and my seven dogs. 
Yeah. Because <laughs> I, I, I mean, I don't think the plan, the original plan was for five, but here we are at five. Yeah. And you know what? The, when we got to five, I kind of, I was a, on the last one, I was a sucker. Maybe the second to last one, I was a sucker because he had a broken leg. And he had to uh, cast and everything, and he was a puppy. And I was like, oh, God, all right, if they got nobody else, then yeah, we'll take him on. And then of course, he, yeah, yeah, always got a meet and greet this weekend. Sure, no problem. Yeah, no, he's still with us. And then the last one, I forget how he even came on him. It was the same deal. He was just a rescue that she brought home, and he was so timid he wouldn't even leave the bedroom. Like Crystal was on the floor in his face, like trying to get him to leave the bedroom. And then now he's a great dog. He goes up to other people, and he's just you know he's lively, and he just. Yeah. You know, after getting so attached, like that's the problem with these two. I'm drawing the line like big time. Like I cannot get attached <laughs> to these dogs. I don't hold them. I don't. I, I pet them very little. I cannot get attached to these dogs. My my crystal is so attached to them right now. She holds them like babies. That my Scarlet oh, loves them. Oh man, it's it's dangerous territory. But it just can absolutely not happen. Five is absolutely the max. And I think you know a lot <laughs> now too. Is Crystal's been doing a lot with him too. She's been feeding him like right now. Like I came downstairs and the dogs were fucking barking in the crate, and the kids are sleeping upstairs. So she's had to be the one to go and take them and put them away. And she gets sick of the shit too. So it's like, yes, you yeah. realize it's like having a newborn baby, but one that you didn't want or need to take care, you know, want to take care of, but it constantly needs your attention. It's gonna wake up the other kids. That's like that's funny. Shit. That's funny. Five is the absolute line. Because, yeah, you know, know, five isn't crazy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, There's it's kind of like kids, right? Like once you have your third kid, it's like, ah, oh, whatever, four, five, ten, twelve, who gives a shit? Right? Yeah, yeah. After after whatever <clears throat> number it becomes, they just it doesn't fucking matter anymore. They could just keep coming in. If they if they were bigger dogs, it might not be so bad, but as they're puppies and like I said, and they're just a destructive force that barks in their crate and tramples my yard and shits and pisses everywhere, that throws a that's that's where yeah, that's where the line is drawn. And they're not small dogs. All of them range from 60 to 90 pounds. Oh, it's nice. Like, it's a goddamn circus. Between my two kids that are four and two, it's chaos. Yeah. Sounds how like are your, it. How are your boys doing? How's uh, how's Gino like in kindergarten? He's doing good. He loves it. Um, you know, he's been in daycare his uh, basically his whole life from when he was five months. So... The transition to kindergarten wasn't too bad. Uh, my wife was worried about him getting on the bus, but, you know, first day comes, he's just like, bye. Walks nice. right on the bus, you know? So That's the best. He's been good. And he was all excited, but now the last couple of days, he's like, oh, I don't want to go to school. It's like, well, dude, you got a, <laughs> you got a long it's, way to go. Yeah. It's funny how Donovan was saying, well, we made it about a week. And then he was like, oh, <gasps> I don't want to get up. It's too light. Yeah. It's too light outside. Yeah. Like, oh, well, no, buddy, that's how it goes. You got to get up and get going. You make it big in about a week. And like, guess what, yeah. Chief? You got about 13 more years of this at least. So exactly. get used to G- it. Gino just wants to stay home and watch Power Rangers and play on his iPad. Oh, my God. Donovan is so fucking hooked on Power Rangers. I, I had to stop him from watching it. It's because- it's too much. I mean, Power Rangers, Dino Fury, Power Rangers, Dino yeah. Force, Power Ninja, Rangers, Ninja Steel, your sister's Dino ass, Thunder. You know? yeah. it's like, oh my god, how many fucking uh, Power Rangers do we need here? It's so fun, yeah, and when I was a kid, like, I loved Power Rangers when I was, it, like, Mighty Morphin came out, the original came out, and it yeah. probably got about two seasons, I think, before we got a little too old for it. But the first season came out. I love it. I thought it was awesome. And then, yeah, to find out that it's still around and they're still pumping out new seasons of it. And 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 the fact that our kids are so hooked on it. Like, I liked it, but I wouldn't even think I was as hooked on it as Donovan was. Yeah. I remember. It's You know what's funny, too, is I still remember one time sleeping over your house. And I think the movie was coming out. The first movie they put out. And you were like, I don't know, man. I just I can't get it. Because whether they punch or kick or scratch yeah. their head, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> It's just exactly. too much of it. It's yeah. no different now. Now it's so fucking convoluted. The monsters and stuff, because it's it's all pulled from. Well, it used to be like almost a hundred percent pulled. All the all the Power Ranger and monster stuff was pulled from a Japanese cartoon, not a Japanese a Japanese show called Super Sentai. Yeah, um, I remember that's, you telling me that. So basically, yeah. this had to be the cheapest show of all time to make. Yeah. Right? Oh, that's why I was an incredible cash cow because it was just merchandise, merchandise, merchandise. Yeah. They didn't have to do any production. They just bought the footage and they just, the only footage they did was the, you know, when they're out of their costumes and the Americans, but everything else, because you can even see in some of the newer ones when there's a fight scene, the background signs are in Japanese or Korean, I think, well, you know, whatever it was. Yeah. 
Um, and then, yeah, so it, it's they still do it. But I think now, actually, a lot of the villains are original. The storylines are completely original. Like, they've, they've kind of veered on to their own now. But, yeah, but the kids fucking love it. I, I got to stop them. Oh. Because everything is Ninja Steel, Lock In, Ninja Span, <laughs> Ready. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's hilarious. Yeah, Gino's it never got the friggin' ends. The morpher and the whole nine and yeah, you know, just, can, oh yeah, bounces all over the couches when he's watching. <laughs> it makes a mess. Watches it for hours on end. Yep. And, and then the Netflix thing ends. pops up. Are you still watching? And he yells to me to make it go away. <laughs> you know? And there's no there's no hesitation. As soon as that comes up, Daddy, oh, Daddy, yeah. yeah, you're yeah. in the other room. All right, buddy, one minute. All right, Daddy, turn it back on. All right, I yeah. know. Zero, yeah, zero patience. Get the Power Rangers back on. Exactly. Oh, it, it happens even when we're watching, you know, what other things like on Disney Plus has the countdown to the next episode. 15 yeah. seconds. Daddy, can I, Daddy, turn it on. Look, okay, wait 10 more seconds and it will come on yeah. on its own. All right, Jesus Christ. No patience. <laughs> And then you got to have the way, you know what, kid, in my day, we only watched one episode and you had to wait the okay. whole week to watch some more. That's right. So you have no idea how good you have. And we recorded it on our VCRs and we'd watch it over and over until the next yeah. week. I can't wait to go through that shit and show them VHS tapes. Because, <clears throat> yeah, Saturday. I mean, dude, the, our kids are skip. I mean, they're not even VHS. I mean, you could show them DVDs and they'd be like, what's this? You know? Yeah, that's that's true, too. They've seen it. They've by seen, the got... time they're old enough to really realize or have their own collection, it's going to be all streaming. You know? Yeah. And everything's like that now. You can get Alexa yeah. to play literally any song you want right now, and it's fucking crazy. Yeah. No idea how, how good it is. And it's, and it's funny because the way technology moves that fast, you don't feel as old where you have to have those kind of conversations. I feel like my parents never even had those kind of conversations with me. Like, well, back in my day, we didn't have this or that. Yeah. But now, like, for us, technology-based and talking about how good you have it now, everything is at your fingertips. Forget about it. Oh, yeah. It. Nuts. And the tablets. Like, my – you know, you never wanted to be – the parent were like, oh, I'm just going to give the kid the tablet and that's it. But that's just the nature of the beast. Oh, the that's how you do it. The, best, the tablet's the best babysitter <laughs> going. You know? Exactly. I got to I gotta do this. I got to do that. Here, throw the tablet at them. You know, yep. see in a couple of hours. And there they are. <laughs> a couple of hours later, they didn't move. They're on that tablet. Yeah, the, to Donovan, when he gets home, that's why when he gets home from school, we put on Power Rangers, fucking forget about it. He's bouncing off the walls. So today it was like, here, look, take your tablet and just lay down. He watched it for a little bit. He rolled over. He took a nap for an hour. So there yeah. you go. Per perfect. Yep. Good for long car rides, anything. Genius invention. Oh, yeah, the best. Yep. Yep. Yeah, cell phones, the same thing. Going out to a restaurant. It's so much. It's, you see a ton of parents. I don't know if you, I don't think you were like this, but like, just, is it instantly? Just put the phone. All right, here we're at dinner. Here, just watch the phone. Watch something on the phone. No, we... no, we don't. Uh, me and my wife try to make it a point not to do that, and it's annoying because sometimes we'll go out with friends, or I'll go out with family members, and there's other kids, and sure enough, they come strolling into the restaurant with their iPad and tell. It's like, come yeah. on, man. Like you're not even like, you're not even hiding it and like letting. The the behavior get to a point where it's like, all right, let me break out the iPad. Yeah. No, and that boom, iPad out right away. And now yeah. I got my kids looking at me like, well then, you know, yeah, exactly. Like, I want to play I... Minecraft, you know, then I'll let them borrow my phone. Cause I feel bad, <laughs> but yeah, I do not bring those out at all. They sit there and eat. And yeah. Donovan was great with it, but Scarlet, not so much. Scarlet's a monster. And, it, but then, yeah, the problem you have with it is like, all right, she's being bad. Now I got to give her the phone so she can watch something. And then Donovan's yeah. like, well, how come I can't oh, watch dude, it? Because you're being good, buddy. That's right. why you can't. Oh, I've, I've definitely resorted to it, but I try yep. to stay away from it. And now yeah, I can, and I've seen it. You know, my kids are a little older than yours. So, you know, I think I'm at that spot now where, especially Vincent, my oldest, he's going to behave. He knows what's right and wrong. And he's not going to be a monster in the restaurant anymore. I'm yeah. like a two or younger year old, you know. I've yet to take him to the movies. I'm dying to. I'm hoping for Ghostbusters in December. It's when we finally go to yeah. the movies. But we've been to the drive-in a bunch of times, but not the actual movies. You've been taking your kids to the movies forever. Yeah, we go a lot. Yeah, it's good. They like it. Um, yeah, they they get pumped. They get the snacks and everything. And yeah, they sit there. And sometimes if it's like an action movie or something, and there's a lot of kids in there, they'll get up and start acting stuff out. But it's fine because there's <laughs> other kids doing it too. And you're not yeah. really. 
I always make sure to get the seats at the, towards the end of the row, so that way we kind of got our own little section, you know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. When they have to get up and go to the bathroom in the middle of the movie, which is bound. Yeah, to we're not bothering anyone, or if they're up doing their thing, you know, dancing or whatever, you know. Yeah, they're not obstructing anyone's view or in anyone's way. So yeah, Donovan. Uh, Donovan's been playing a little t-ball now. He had a game oh, yeah? last. What's today? Thursday. So he had a game. He had a game Tuesday night. And in the middle of the inning, Daddy, I got to go to the bathroom. Like, he, he yeah. can't, buddy. We're in the middle of the inning. He's got yeah. his glove. He's covering his crotch. Like, no, I really got to go. I'm like, Ugh. all right, man. Yeah. Well, go. Go off the field. Go see, see Papa. Have him take you to, have him try to take you to the bathroom. Misses yeah. an inning and a half as he walks all the way across the field to go to the bathroom. Oh, jeez. Not like they want to be there anyway. Yeah, T-ball's rough, man. I did T-ball uh... – for two years and uh the third year he was like in between like coach pitch and t-ball again or whatever the case was and i was just Mm -hmm. like we're done with t-ball it's so painful i mean if you yeah i mean you're not experiencing that i think it's the most painful thing ever it is it's it's torture there's a there's a few things i want to cover out one is now now, because i'm like an assistant coach kind of with it oh yeah yeah, kind of like assistant coaches yeah Yeah, oh well there's there's only five kids on his team i know yeah same with my son the thing is, too, because it's we're doing like uh, fall instead of spring, so you get kids playing football. A lot of kids didn't sign up, so you're in that kind of you know that le- that limbo of where the season really is. But you got to deal right. with parents, dealing with other kids, and oh, yeah. also too they want no part of being there at all. But but that's that's funny because again, going back to the dynamic, I wondered how much your kids were into sports because I know they like watching sports and going to sports. You've yeah. t- taken them a bunch of times, and I mean we don't we don't like hardly ever even watch sports. So Don, but Donovan's kind of liking it. Like he plays soccer. He likes playing playing soccer. He likes getting out and doing things. But we've never done anything like that. Your kids again. They yeah. love Power Rangers. I know Vincent still loves Fortnite. Well, she like that crazy. Yes. So Vincent's big video gamer loves Minecraft, Roblox, Fortnite. He's started playing NBA 2K uh, last couple <laughs> months. So he's he's really into basketball now, and he's really just in, now he's getting really into sports. I mean, he's coming up and telling me players' names that I definitely didn't teach him. So he's yeah. recognizing it. And today, actually tonight, where we were before, he had his first football practice. So. Oh really? Oh okay. Cool. Yeah. 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 Full blown tackle football. Yeah. Really? Oh well, he's he's yeah. what? He's nine. He's seven. Eight? seven. Seven. Okay. Yeah. So he's tackle in. Uh, wow. Yeah. So his uh, division's called Mighty Mites, and uh, that's a six and seven year old. So he didn't play last year because of you know all the COVID nonsense. And, yeah. But uh, yeah, he's playing this year, so it's pretty wild. Nice. Yeah, I know. I know yeah, you're demand, taking that demanding as fuck, dude. I mean, yeah. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday practice from six yeah. to eight, and then a game oh, either shit. Saturday or Sunday. And then the one coach was like, "Oh yeah, we, you know, one day we got a game Sunday like twelve thirty. It's like, come on, dude. Yeah, you can't play it on real, Saturday. All <laughs> the real football all going the on. Fathers there. Look, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know? Well, Jeez. I mean, hey, whatever. My my father had to do it, and all the other dads. So yeah, and you got your phone now, so it's constantly going off with updates. Yeah, exactly. Five so seconds. that's definitely a plus. But I know once the games start going, I'll be locked into my son. You know. Yeah, you know. Then the coaches are the same way. Like, all right, let's go. Let's keep it moving. We got to get out of here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, fuck a Giants kick off at one. Yeah. Yeah, and I know you're because you're a fucking man cave too. It's not just like you got your own shit up. You've got a couch with three TVs with three different sports channels going on every Sunday. Oh yeah. Every Sunday down here. I mean, I'm down here pretty much every night. Yeah. Uh, you know, the wife's, the wife's always welcome, but she's not feeling it down here for whatever reason. So <laughs> she stays upstairs and watches her show. She basically has the whole rest of the house. Yeah. So I'm down here, you know, playing PlayStation, watching sports pretty much every night. So yeah. Nice, yeah. She's she's the she's the wine drinking mom. Hangs out watching her own shows, right? What to catch oh, up yeah, on? Dude. I, right yeah. now, I think she's watching the challenge or something. And oh, that kind of shit. Yeah, tread shows on uh, all this garbage reality TV. Uh, and... hey, I don't even, I don't even want to get into it because because now we found we finished what the hell were we just fucking watch? I actually just banged through Sons of Anarchy with Crystal, which is probably like my fourth or fifth time watching it. But she, her first yeah. time actually watching the show, yeah. But now 
we discovered or she discovered because we'd, we'd, we'd lay with the kids and they watch TV until they fall asleep and then we bring them to their rooms, which was a huge fucking mistake. And we'll have to cover that at another time because that's a whole other ordeal. Yeah. But uh, so we'll, we'll throw on like one of our shows that aren't too adult. Like, so now we discovered that Grey's Anatomy is on Netflix like every season. So now Crystal's oh, back. How Crystal's, many seasons are there? There's like 15 fucking seasons of Grey's Anatomy oh, at least. God. Like when it's new that's and like it's out like. Much. Yeah. But now she discovers she can watch it all over again from Netflix, and it's like, ah, shit. So that's what oh, we're that's what we're binge watching again. And then when everybody falls asleep, like, all right, let me find what I'm watching. Maybe I squeeze in Rick and Morty or an episode of Heels or something. But then I just fall asleep fucking anyway because it's so late. Yeah, yeah. You got to uh, you got to watch Ted Lasso. I'm here, and that show is great. Oh, I have not, I haven't heard a single bad thing, and so many people Phenomenal. are talking about that. Unbelievable. I mean, yeah. It's got everything. It's great. You just got to watch it. You know, I do, and yeah, they're I quick. Gotta watch. They're quick. They're like 30 minute episodes. You just bang them out. Before you know it, you watch six and, you know, blink of an eye. It's, yeah, it's unbelievable. Yeah. I'm actually tomorrow, on every Friday, a new episode comes out. I didn't watch last week's yet. So tomorrow I'll watch two. Yeah. yeah. Then that's got Jason Sudeikis in it. And he's what? Yeah. He's a baseball, he's a baseball coach. No. So he's a, he's a, he's a American football coach. Okay. But, he was hired for one of the Premier League teams in England to coach soccer or what they refer to as football. <laughs> so he's an American football coach teaching or coaching, um, you know, European football or basically the whole rest of the world football. Is how yeah, yeah exactly. It, you know? <laughs> so it's pretty funny. You know, he's basically has no idea what he's doing, but he relies on his motivational skills and, uh, it's just so many people are it's, talking about that show. Oh, it's it's unbelievable, man! It's absolutely unbelievable. I haven't I, there there hasn't been one bad episode. Yeah, I gotta check it out because oh, because yeah, everybody's talking about it. And it's on Apple TV, which you know I don't subscribe to. I just I'm using my free year trial. I think it came. Oh yeah, life. yeah. I finally activated it, so mm -hmm. I got it free for a year. But Ted Lasso is so good that I'll buy the subscription of Apple just TV. Just check it out. Oh, absolutely! I can't miss the show. You know, it's, yeah. I don't think enough people. I don't think enough people were doing that with uh, YouTube Red for Cobra Kai, and that's why Netflix bought it out. Uh, maybe. Well, good thing. Yeah. Because how many people were watching YouTube that? Red? Yeah, like I ain't signing up for that shit. Yeah, is YouTube Red still a thing? I don't even know. Probably not. If they lost Cobra Kai, I don't know what the hell else they got. Yeah. There's a there's another show on Apple TV. It's called C. Have you watched it? It's got a what the well, I can't remember his name. Of course, um, fucking Aquaman. Jason and uh, uh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. How <laughs> he's incredibly uh, popular. How much Momoa, like, right? Momoa? Oh, yeah, Jason Momoa. Yeah, Jesus yeah. of all fucking people. Yeah, and it's it's a, a thing where it's like a couple thousand years, a hundred years in the future, and everyone is blind. Uh, but you can't you can't get past the fact that there's no way they could do any of their shit being blind. Everybody yeah. build building yeah. bridges, building. You know, communities and fighting, fighting and dodging punches and shit. Like, all right, never mind. This would be, the show would be terrible like if a, it was realistic. What do they got a sixth sense or something? That's ex yeah, what I guess that? that's what they're going off of after. I don't know. They're well, why is everyone blind? Like, what happened? Uh, they explain it in the beginning of the first episode. And I don't even know because they breeze yeah. past it through like subtext in the beginning of it, quick dialogue, and uh, that's it. Yeah, okay. And then it's on. Everybody's just blind, and then that's what. But you can't take yourself out of it. Who else? Yeah. I think like Nate, Nate Quarry tweeted about it the other day, and I was like, "Bro, yeah, that's exactly it. Like, you can't even watch it without, without being like, look, look, I, I can't, I can't get into this. I can't take myself out of the fact that no one would be doing any of this shit because they're fucking blind." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Going back to one thing I wanted to say because you're talking about they have they missed, um, you know, they missed playing playing sports because of COVID and shit like that. I saw yeah. today that. Because and, and again too, you take your kids to games all the time, and you take go to Mets games all the time. They talked about today you're going to need proof of being vaccinated to go to a Met game. Really? Yeah, that you're going to need well, at least proof that you've gotten at least one shot of your vaccination if you're under twelve, or I mean, I'm over other or older than twelve. Oh, okay. Uh, I didn't see that yet. I saw. Um... See, and this is the thing, man. A lot of these headlines are like misleading. Like, um, 
That's true. It was just, it was just a headline I caught. I didn't so it I, I I did read the other day that you have to show proof of vaccination to go into certain indoor dining facilities inside City Field. Like you know, they have different clubs that you can go into. That like you know, if you have a certain ticket, it provides you access to this club or this like the Excelsior Club or the Delta Club or whatever. You know, they're named by sponsors. But um, I did read that that you need to show proof of vaccination to go in there to dine however i did also read that you could actually go in there without proof of vaccination but then you have to get your food to go so to me it makes no fucking sense because yeah, like why are you letting people sense. in and i mean so i that, could probably devote fucking four hours to my <laughs> aggravation over the last year and a half with just the hypocrisy of covid see I I mean, mean, that, the that's... things that just contradict each other you know and you know, and I don't think from what you see, because again, I mean, it, like when you see with social media, it's like one extreme or the other. Yeah. Because I completely understand wearing masks and being protective. Wearing a mask isn't a fucking pain in the ass to me. I mean, I'm vaccinated, and we live in Jersey. We haven't had a mask. You know, I haven't worn a mask actually in a long time since they kind of lifted the mandate. Even though you know, New Jersey is like a fucking hotbed for it right now. But I'm vaccinated. Yeah. I don't. I don't wear a mask right now. Uh, but if I if I needed to and I, they they asked me to again, I wouldn't mind. It doesn't fucking kill me to wear a mask to go into the store and out of the store. But no, I agree. But, I, but, but, I, but again, why? yeah. But there's you know, yeah, there's so many. Thing. Like I understand that it doesn't make any fucking sense if I can go and sit in the restaurant. Like I can if I walk to my table, I'm walking past people. Okay, I get. It's just anything, I guess, to just limit the exposure. Because if well, I'm I, walking I, to my table and I'm wearing my mask, but then I'm sitting down, but then the the yeah. you know there's people walking past me to go to the bathroom. I guess they're wearing well, their mask too. And that's it's that's just, the thing. I always bring up this point with the whole restaurant thing, right? So you're sitting down. When are you your most animated and your most talkative and your mouth's open and stuff? It's when you're eating and you're talking amongst friends. Like let's say we all go out to eat. There's a table of eight of us, right? You know, obviously your voices are going to escalate. You're going to be animated and talking because, you know, you get in a debate or you're being funny. You're sharing stories. And you're talking over each other and stuff. Your mouth's open because you're eating. And again, you're shouting and this, that and the other thing. But then when you get up to go to the bathroom, you put your mask on. But while you walk to the bathroom, you walk there civilly with your fucking mouth closed. Mm -hmm. Right. You're not talking and stuff. Right. So I would think you're more at risk sitting down. You know, stuffing your yeah. face, yelling and hooting and hollering. But when I walk, yeah, there's the bed, germs and, flying all over the place. You know? And again, too, there. then, then there's uh, places with like bar height seating. So it's like, well, here I am sitting in this stool, and I'm the same height as people that are walking around. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, I it's just, I, I get it. Like, you know, people trying to do the right thing. But to me, it it, it has become the ultimate sign of like, hey, look, I care. You know? Yeah, and and you know, and, and that's the thing too, because a lot of what I look at all of this shit as is being considerate for other people, and right, a lot of, of people, a lot of people stay, take the stand, uh, well, fuck other people because I'm free and I can do what I want, and then there's the other group of like, well, you know, we're just worrying about everybody's health, but then it right. goes one extreme or the other. Well, yeah, and see, and I I buy that to an extent, but now like you know, it, it it's factual now, like the vaccine does not provide you perfect protection from contracting the virus right so now it's like okay well anyone can kind of get it you know it doesn't matter now the vaccine does reduce you know your symptoms or you know greater chance of staying alive which is great but then now it's become well you can't really you know people who are you know so crazy about the vaccine now now the argument of like well you have to do it for me is kind of out the window because it's like well if you can still contract it from someone who is unvaccinated, then what does it really matter? And then well, now the argument is like, well, you're unvaccinated, you know, uh, the unvaccinated people are dying. But the unvaccinated people have chose to be unvaccinated at this point. Anyone who's unvaccinated right now, it's because they don't want to be. I mean, they are readily available. You can make an appointment right now, walk down to CVS, or you could just walk into CVS tomorrow and get your vaccine. Yeah. So if you don't have it now, it's because you didn't want it. And that gets a little phony to me, like people caring, because people are selfish by nature. They just are. You know, you see it all over the place. But now everyone's using our argument, oh, do it for your neighbor. Yeah, well, my neighbor can get COVID with or without the vaccine. So, Well, uh, because the aspect of that is that the vaccine is not 100% effective. 
Right. It's even if it's 90 percent perfect uh, effective. So you've got that 10 percent where obviously you can still catch it. So it might be blocking you from some people. But then there's that other person that squeaks in and you can still get it even if you're vaccinated. Because, again, it's not like no vaccine is 100 percent accurate, uh, effective. And then that's, that's where it comes the, in. So the, the more people thing. that get vaccinated, the more you're limiting that percentage that you can get it. Like that's the thing with oh, other yeah, two no. about, about wearing masks. Like my wife's friend just went to a wedding and she was like, I'm going to wear a mask, which they didn't. But the point is, it's like the, the mask is not to protect you from other people. It's to protect other people from you because of your breathing out. The mask is blocking it from going out. So yeah, it, yeah, that's, but, why, that's why if uh, everybody was wearing a mask, it's less germs floating through the air at each other. So really, when you wear a mask, you are doing it for other people because – and that's why it would take everybody doing it because then you're protecting each other that way. Yeah, no, I, I understand the thinking behind it. I just – I don't know, man. In our area, in New York, in the winter, we all – we had mask mandates, straight-up mask mandates. You couldn't go anywhere without wearing a mask. And, hey, I abided by it because, hey, look, yeah, we're all in this together. And also, too, I'm not trying to give, you know, the 19-year-old employee at ShopRite a hard time. Like, oh, I'm a free man. I'm not wearing a mask, you know, because yeah. ultimately it's store policy. They could be like, hey, get out of here. Like, well, guess who's the jerk off now walking out without groceries, right? <laughs> I really showed them, right? No. So I'm not trying to make anyone's life difficult. But at the same time, the highest case count we had was during that, that time period when everyone's wearing a mask. Mm -hmm. I know people who wear masks religiously everywhere that got COVID. So, again, ex explain that to me. You know, I yeah. just don't understand it. I think it's a virus and it sucks and the virus is going to do what the virus is going to do. I mean, it's, you know, it's talked about being so contagious, which clearly it is. Yet here we got people like advocating for fucking cloth masks. It's like, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. You know, like, you think that cloth mask is going to stop the deadliest fucking virus? Of all time, no. Yeah, it's there, not. There, there's there's the memes out there that are funny of like the doctors who are dealing with it wearing the whole fucking hazmat suit, right. and then there's there's you are with your little paper mask that's blocking. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and again, it, it's be, it's become a joke. What's except like you know, and they're like, oh, N95 masks are you know are better to handle it, which would make sense to me. They're somewhat of a surgical mask. There's like some you know something behind you know added layer of protection. A regular cloth mask. I mean, basically like this T-shirt. Just fucking cut yeah. up, put fucking two hooks around, and I put around my ears, and there we go. Now I'm, I that, got a mask, and I'm protected. And that everything. becomes a thing, too, where there's oh, – I forget what they call them, but those little, like, scarf headband deals that you could wrap around your yeah, face. Yeah, gators. Yeah. Yeah, that's it, a gators. Yeah, they're not so effective. Well, I, yeah, know, I, I saw, like, my gym, for instance, when it first reopened, you had to wear a mask, but, like, gators were no, were no good. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, like, what's the difference between that guy's gator and my cloth mask? Honestly, like, yeah, I always did a test when I when I put on the mask, when I put on anything, I try to breathe into my hand and see how much I feel it, and then you yeah. can kind of tell. Yeah, I mean, obviously the mask does protect more than the fucking because I've got a shitload of those gator things. Yeah, it's you know, and and you see on because social media again is the fucking worst because everything gets put out there and if you see one post a million people see one post it seems like every you know a million people are doing this but it really was only one person doing whatever but I actually did yeah. see there was two instances going to shop right that i saw where one time a guy was arguing with the man this was very early on during the pandemic where the guy was arguing with the manager at Shoprite that no 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 you should have kicked that person out and you need to apologize to my wife because i guess there was somebody there earlier who was not wearing a mask and the guy yeah. must have said something to him um and then there was another time where i was in the produce section and a woman and a guy like stopped a woman and i, I almost thought they were friends that we were kind of interacting he was like oh bam you're not wearing your mask properly like i almost thought he was like oh, busting Jesus a chop like, I, the I, mask thought bust, I thought he was busting her chops and yeah. then she was like, no, no, it's got to go like over this. And then and then she was like, look, I just took it off to adjust my glasses. All right. That's it. And then yeah. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, see, not friends. He, and that's the thing. And that's where it's gotten like you got people like that. The people who are like so pro vaccine. And it's like you're not vaccinated, like you're the devil. And then you got the people on the other side like, oh, you you're a coward for wearing a mask and blah, blah, blah. Just everyone needs to just fucking chill the fuck out. Okay. Yeah. Like seriously. But like also too, what 
kind of going a little off topic of people showing out. Well, I guess not. The, the I'm sure you had it in your grocery store the fucking arrows. Oh in yeah, the I did. Who Are you fucking kidding me? I, I what the fuck was. is that? Like, and you know what? It's funny. Like, I, I would watch people in my local shop, right? They would go down the one way, right? But then they're like, oh, shit. Like, I need to get out, but I don't want to walk all the way down to the end of the aisle. And they would, like, fucking back up like they were in a car. <laughs> I'm like, you asshole. Just turn around and walk out. If I never saw anybody up, abide by that. Just fucking turn around and walk out. What's the difference? Oh, they were so stupid. And it's funny. Like, you could see people were like, oh. And then I'd have, you know, you, I would overhear it in shop, right? Hey, you're going down the wrong way. Like, what, uh, are you going to so, issue me a fucking citation here? Like, yeah. get the fuck see, out of here. That, I think, is going to be a huge thing that's going to come up a lot. And, again, and that's, like, our thing that – and, I mean, when we went to the, the bar the one time, we went to the bar when you asked me to be uh, Gino's godfather. And we just sat at the bar and bullshit the whole time. Then it was, like, the last five minutes before we got in our car. Oh, hey, by the way <laughs> – for the reason I yeah. asked you out here tonight. But one of the things I came up and I thought about it the whole time then was like, it all comes down to just don't be an asshole. Well, like, right. if I saw someone not wearing their mask, like, look, I'm all, I'm about mask. I understand it and everything. I'm not going to go to that person and say, cause there's a hundred fucking people that wear their mask that covers their mouth or their chin and not their nose. Yeah. And then you're defeating the whole purpose of it. Right. But I'm not going to go to everybody and go, Hey man, you got to fix your mask properly. Like, you know, it it sucks and it's dangerous, but you just you can't do that. Like you, you can't be an asshole to fucking other people. You got to let other people one make their own mistakes and live their own lives. You really just got to mind your own fucking business. Well, that, see, and, and that, what that's you just always said something there, that we that we agree on. What you just said there is ultimately like my whole feeling on all of this. Look, like no one's, you know, I'm not. I mean, I it. I'm pretty sure it's fucking easy to tell which way I lean on this fucking, but <laughs> I also don't think it's a fucking hoax. I don't think it's fake at all. It's very real. Like people have fucking died from it. There's no denying that people have gotten very sick from it. Absolutely no denying that. But at the end of the day, like this thing, it doesn't appear that it's going anywhere. You know, it mutates mm -hmm. and there's different variants. Ultimately, like you got to let people just do what they're going to do. I mean, Hey, you know, if someone's unvaccinated and they're reckless and they're fucking licking doorknobs and doing whatever the fuck they're doing and they end up dying. I mean, yeah, that's sad. But you know what? The guy that jumps out of the plane skydiving as a hoppy, he's fucking crazy, too. But we're not fucking having protests and all this other shit. Right. I mean, hey, you, life comes with risks. You want people to do the right thing. I think the vaccine's out. Enough people have had or had access to it. So that's a great thing. It's a step in the right direction. But at some point, you got to get to the point. You got to get to the part where we're just, hey, you, take care of yourself, wash your hands, do the right thing. Yeah. And if they don't, like, what are you, you going to do? You know? Yeah, you can't fucking grab them by the wrist and make them wash their hands. Yeah. And I, I mean, mean, I, I, I mean obviously, look at what's going on in uh, New York City and, like, now L.A. County. Like, you have to you have to provide a fucking – your vaccine card to go eat. And now, yeah. because there's so much fraud, you know, people are counterfeiting these vaccine cards. Now you have to show your vaccine card and your ID. Can you believe that? You have to show your fucking ID to have a slice of pizza? Are you that's, fucking kidding? Yeah, that's crazy. But at the same time, just last, you know, the last election, the whole, uh, you know, showing your ID to vote was deemed crazy See, and racist and everything. Yeah. But it's like to vote. Voting's a lot bigger deal, I think, than grabbing a fucking slice of pizza, if you ask me. I don't know. And again, that that's a whole other avenue going on is politics and shit like that, too, about it. But I'll tell you what. Again, you know, I'm a Democrat and I'm very much more of a liberal than that. But I, I kind of fall in the, the middle of it. I'm not super liberal. But I absolutely understand presenting your identification to vote. Why the yeah. fuck is that? I, gotta, I mean, there, there, obviously, there's, there's for an everything. argument for that. Yeah, obviously, there's an argument for why that's necessary. I don't know. And from what I, it's obviously so, you know, the Democrats can get more votes from illegals and shit like that. Right. But I don't see why, again, if there's nothing to hide in this and that, you absolutely should be able to see, or you should, absolutely should be able to present your ID when you're voting. I, I don't right. see why that's that's that taboo of a fucking thing. Oh, I, I mean, and that, that's gotta, one way or the other. Show your, you got to show your ID for everything. I mean, and here I am saying, like, you shouldn't have to show your ID to go eat because uh, we've never done that. That's a little crazy. I mean, where does it end, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, so, so if you're not vaccinated, you're essentially – they're making it to the point where you're not going to be able to do anything. Is that what we're getting? Like, you're not going to be able to go to a grocery store? I mean, strong-arm people to get this like that I think is just wrong. 
you know. I think they well, could have went about it a different way. Make it more you know, kind of like encourage people to do it because now you 100 percent are going to have the people that are just not going to do it because now they're being told they have to and no one likes being yeah. told they have to do something any grown adult does not enjoy that no matter what it is which is, whether it's a it, medical is, thing or yeah but, but, but I, th- I think that is kind of childish to do that to say like oh well now you're gonna now yeah. i'm just not gonna because i'm an adult and you don't gotta tell me what to do well, but course. if it's if Dude, this is kind of a grander people. scale well, yeah, both no. ends, people are going to be fucking childish and immature, you know? Yeah. But, we, I mean, we can't even talk about this without mentioning that you you had COVID. You're, yeah. you're, a, you're a state trooper. You deal with people all the fucking time. You wear a mask. But now you had kind of a unique situation how you got it, though, didn't you? From what you told well, me. Like, so you have to... yeah, so what ahead. happened was um, um, very early on, there was a testing site by us. That we would uh, have, we would provide overnight security at and stuff. So um, I was, I worked there for a week, and again, I'm there at night. So the only person I'm exposed to is my partner, you know. Um, but about a week after we left our our week of uh, security there, he got it from his girlfriend, who's an occupational therapist. So she works in like, and she's an occupational therapist for like uh, like elderly people. So her being in that environment, that's probably where she got it. Then, you know, again, you don't know you're symptomatic for, you know, it could be, what was it, two to 14 days. You may not show symptoms or whatever. So clearly they think everything's fine. She gets it, gives it to him. Another coworker of mine had it. And then my wife had symptoms. And I remember working and uh, my wife went to get tested. And she was like, hey, you should really get tested considering I have symptoms and then you're too you know, coworkers that you work closely with have it. So I went and got tested. I got tested on Saturday of Memorial Day weekend. My wife got tested Friday. Very early on, sometimes the test results took like, you know, five or six days to get back. The test site I went to, because we were first responders, they kind of expedited our process just so, because they know we're dealing with the public and stuff like that. Because like my wife, she could have just stayed home. Right. And she could have worked from home. Me, if I'm waiting for a test, this was still early on. We didn't know what to do. I could be at work infecting people. Right. So they make my test a little bit, uh, you know, they expedited the results. I got my results on Memorial Day that I was positive. Mm -hmm. Fast forward two days, my wife gets her results back and she's negative. And she has symptoms and you got nothing. Right. So, as contagious as this thing is, I don't never understand that for the life of me. And again, she's we don't have the results back yet and it's like hey you know it's early on in COVID I'm not asking my mom who's 70 years old with diabetes to come over and watch my kids because she's more at risk than any of us so it's like we really can't quarantine from our kids we've all got to take care of it care of them we don't know if we have it so we my point is we we never separated from each other we slept in the same bed and blah 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 and she never gets it now that's, that's she so finally wild. did get it. She got it about a month ago. Oh, she really? gets it. Oh, and I'm kind of, I have the attitude, you know, I don't know, maybe I'm stubborn. I don't know, but I'm, you know, mid thirties in shape, you know, watch what I eat, take care of myself. COVID the first time was, you know, I clearly had a mild case because I didn't feel anything. I always tell people the way I knew I had COVID is because someone had to tell me I had COVID. Yeah. You know, so, mm-hmm. and then she I gets it. She gets it and she had, you know, she was pretty sick, not nothing crazy, not even close to like going to hospital or anything, but, um, you know, probably like a mild flu and I didn't separate myself from her and I didn't catch it again. And I, it's, it's very confusing. We monitored yeah. the kids. The kids were fine. They had no symptoms. Mm-hmm. So it's very strange how it works. Yeah. So. And I mean, and that's a firsthand case of experiencing it. And that's so weird. Like you said, that, that debunks the how contagious it is and that that's again you, you can't argue with the fact that right you now, now yourself and now you saw how it to, works part of me wants to think and i would think it makes sense science wise but again this virus is so new we don't know enough about it there's variants blah 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 but maybe i didn't catch it a second time because maybe i have antibodies maybe because i had it i'm not catching it or if i do catch it again it'll be even more mild because my body's gonna react every time. i don't know so you're not vaccinated I am not, no. Okay, so then they're not asking you through work to be vaccinated? 
Well, so starting October 12th, um, we have to either be vaccinated or we have to get tested weekly. Okay. Which I, think I, know a lot of, I know a lot of people are doing that. Which I would think will eventually get to, okay, well, now we're not doing testing anymore. Now you have to be vaccinated. And again, I'm not anti-vax at all. I'm just not. Like, I, all my, my kids are up to date on all their vaccinations. I get the flu shot every year. And my argument to that is I've had the flu before. The flu sucks. So I get the flu vaccine. I had COVID. COVID did not suck for me. So, yeah. Again, I don't, I, I just don't feel, and also too, like the whole natural immunity thing isn't being investigated or studied or, or discussed enough, I think. I mean, you see sometimes when Dr. Fauci gets asked questions about natural immunity, he's kind of stumped. Now, again, you know, and this is where like, you know, put on the tinfoil hat, the conspiracy stuff comes from, but people, a lot of people <laughs> think the vaccine, it's being pushed because it's a big money grab. Now, no one does anything for free. People are definitely making money off this thing. That's 100%. Oh, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. what's the benefit of cigarettes? Please tell me one benefit. Uh, yeah, I don't know. There don't is know. no health benefits. But the one big benefit is people are getting rich off it. You know? Yeah. That's why cigarettes still exist. Um, you know, you kind think of they still do? Topic. What's that? I know, right? Not, not to digress a little bit, but do you think people are still getting rich off tobacco in the tobacco industry? Oh, absolutely, man. Absolutely. There's yeah. plenty of smokers out there. Dude, no mm -hmm. one's do no one's running a business or selling a product if it's failing. You know, well that's I mean, true, yeah. They would just go out of business. But I mean, you know, cigarette, what are ten dollars a pack? You know, you got someone that smokes you know, two packs a day. I mean, there and those are there are people like that, you know. That yeah, can't still that. dude, that's fucking insanity. That's hundred and forty dollars a week. You know, it's bonkers. People spell um, on coffee. But my thing is with you know, with the vaccine, my stance right now is like, hey, do I have natural immunity? I'd like to see some more stuff on that. And also, I had a mild case. I don't feel like it's necessary for me. I don't take Tylenol every day just for the hell of it, right? You know, but at the same time, I'm not like, oh, I'm a free man, you know, fuck this. Like, I still respect other people's privacy. If I see someone with a mask, I don't judge them. If I'm required to wear a mask in certain settings, I wear it. And mm -hmm. also, too, if my way of life is going to get disrupted because I'm not vaccinated, then I'm going to get vaccinated. And I hate that it has to come to that. I don't like that. I don't like being strong-armed. But I'm also not trying to knock it on a plane. I want to go to Met and fucking Jet Games. And ultimately, if my job was like, hey, you need it or you're fired, like I'm not, you know, put my kids out on the street with no food yeah. over something that, again, I don't even think is bad. You know, I think – you know, it, it, it does help people and it helps, you know, the, the people that most need it. You know, I think it's important for them to have it. Like I was all about my mom and dad again, you know, they're mm -hmm. older, close to 70. My dad's a cancer survivor. My mom's got diabetes. So I was like, yeah, home run. I was like, I just feel like where I'm at, I don't need it. And then there was yeah, that my, part my where. My... Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was just going to say, and then there was that part where it was like, okay, not getting it. If me not getting it now, am I being selfish because now I'm putting other people at risk? But now you see that there's these breakthrough cases. People with the vaccine are getting it. So, you know, and I don't think I'm a selfish guy at all. And that was never my motivation. So, mm -hmm. but now that aspect's kind of out the window. So it's like, yeah, I'm kind of just in a holding pattern, like waiting and seeing. And again, I know it's, I'm not like, you know, some people are like, oh, I'm waiting to see you. You know, the studies on it and for it to get FDA approved and what's in it. It's like, shut up, guy. You don't know what the fuck's in your flu vaccine or your yeah. fucking smallpox vaccine. You don't pretend you're a fucking, you know. There's some kind of crazy thing I saw. That, that Yeah, that people are getting. I wish I could remember what it was. I want to say it was like fucking garden shit or some wacky shot people are getting. But yet they're like, no, I'm not taking the fucking vaccine. Like, a, oh, but what the, what's this crazy shit that you're putting in your fucking body? Yeah. Hey, over dude, here? I, I have I have family members. I'm not going to name names, but I have family members. I've been at barbecues with them, hanging outside, and they're going like this, sucking down a cigarette, going, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to get that fucking vaccine. I don't know what's in it. <laughs> but you don't know what's in it. You don't know what's in yeah. that fucking cigarette you're sucking down either. You know. See, and my, and my parents, like my dad, was very quick to get it. He's all about it. He he got vaccinated, you know, pretty early on. But my mom, who works in healthcare, 
She is a uh, housekeeper at an assisted living facility. She is not into getting it at all. She doesn't she trust still hasn't it. it. No, but they are wow. going to do the same thing there, where you're, yeah. you're either you're going to get vaccinated or you're going to start getting tested every. Well, she was getting tested every week anyway. And yeah. I mean, knock on wood, it's crazy that she has not gotten that. She's been super careful. She they they have they wear N95 masks, fucking glasses, uh, face yeah. shields. They're in full cover gear. So knock on wood, she, she has not gotten it yet. But she is not looking for. There's people quitting because they're making them yeah. get vaccinated. Well, see, and I, I I have a I don't I don't agree with that. Like I just don't think you should force it on people. I mean, yo, everyone loves to throw that whole like my body my choice thing out there, but like. And I, I 100% agree with that. Again, like we talked about before, you're a Democrat, I'm a Republican. I am a Republican, but I would 100% support abortion, like 100%. You know, yeah, like, you, me- you mentioned I that believe, before. I believe it's a woman's body. She has the right to choose. Now, I think there should be like a deadline, like, you know, the baby's fucking eight months old. Maybe we should, yeah. <laughs> you know, maybe she should have it and give it up for adoption. But that's a different. But ultimately, like, I am all for abortion. But yeah. the argument, like, my body, my choice, like, now we're picking and choosing, you know? Mm-hmm. And, I, and then people are like, well, yeah, you can't be pregnant and make someone else pregnant, but you could give someone COVID. But then again, like you just explained and I was going to get on to that. Your mom hasn't gone and she lives, she works in an environment that is very conducive to getting COVID. Oh, yeah. right? People have been, she's seen people dying. Right. People have come and gone like crazy exactly. with it. Exactly. But she didn't get it. And I always, cause my mom like would get real freaked out about it. And sometimes I have to like talk her of ledge. I'm a big numbers guy. I like to look at the data and people could say whatever they want. I'm not saying this isn't deadly, but the odds of you catching it are very slim. The odds of you dying from it are even more slim. There's six, there's like, I just looked at world meter earlier. I think we're in like the 680, 680,000 in a country. Again, one person dying is too much. 680,000 people dying in 19 months. This country has 330 plus million people in it. And the only reason I talk like this is to give people who are freaked out about it, like a little bit of like clarity, like, hey, your odds of getting it, your odds of, you know. There's definitely a scare tactic where everybody yeah. worried about it and jumped the gun. Like we used to buy groceries man. we used to wipe down every fucking box of groceries we got, take your clothes off in the foyer and we'll throw them right in the wash. Like we we did all that shit, spray each other down with fucking Lysol when we come in the house. Oh, yeah. There was definitely that kind of panic mode right out the gate. I saw a, st- a statistic today that said – I mean, I don't know how accurate it is, obviously, because it was somebody just just posted it, but it was one in five hundred people are getting COVID, and I forget it, I forget the one after now where it said how many people are actually dying of COVID, but right. I think that the the issue is, is it doesn't matter how many people or or how many people are dying, how many people are getting it, you do not want to be one of those people that get it and die, well, and you course. could be, no matter how big the statistics are. You don't want to be because you don't know. It's not like they know specifically this group of people is going to get it and die. You have no idea and you don't want to fall into being one of those statistics. And that's where everybody gets scared and puts up the the big wall and says, no, no, no. This is where I have to try to protect myself and, you know, do everything I can to prevent this because I know I, it, you know, sure, it, it's my chances of getting it are low, but I don't want to take any risk at all. Right. Of course. Yeah. You know- you know, and I'm a big believer on it. Everything comes with risk, you know? You just got to, like, mitigate it as much as you can. And I think it should be up to the individual person, you know? Mm-hmm. I, I, and I found it, too, to go back to what started all this, was, um, so, yeah, effective September, this is on MLB.com, effective September 13th, and this is it says this is specifically for the Mets apparently. Effective September thirteenth, twenty twenty one, guests twelve years and older will be required to show proof of receipt of receipt of at least one dose of COVID nineteen vaccine to enter the Mets Hall of Fame and Museum or to dine in the Hyundai Club or Pat uh, Lafrey's yes, okay. top house. That's, that's so you the saw the same thing. thing. Yep. Yeah. So basically yeah, because- anywhere indoors. Is yeah. where you're gonna have to show proof of vaccination, which which makes sense. And yeah, so the headline I saw exactly, obviously a little misleading, right? See, and I look, and again, a guy who like, you know, thinks there really shouldn't be any restrictions; it should be on the individual person. I think that's again, I I think that's fair. You know, like you're not you're not telling unvaccinated people that they can't come to the game. You're just telling mm-hmm. them, hey, you can't go into this, you know, confined space. I think that's fair. You know. 
Well, another part of that, too, is and this this kind of trickles down to the freedom of speech problem that comes up is it's the the company's decision to do that. Like, hey, yeah. I, I run the show here. I'm making the decision that you so just like the way you're saying people don't need to get it if they don't want to get it. Well, I run this company and I'm saying that you can't come to work unless you get it. And that's right. the company's decision. So that sucks for the person if they don't want to get it. But that's the company's decision, and they have a right to make that decision. Yeah, no, I know. When uh, during this whole thing with the whole mask aspect, um, you know, being a police officer, people would routinely call us and be like, "Hey, so and so is not wearing their mask," you know, at this business. And we'd be like, "Okay, we uh, we'd respond and be like, well, hey, there's really no law, like the, you know. That's the other thing too. That's, yeah, how how the hell do you even handle that? Well, right, because you know, Governor Cuomo, for instance, he came out and said like it's the law, like because there was a video of like NYPD cops not wearing a mask, and he said something along the lines of like, how are they supposed to enforce the law if they don't follow the law? The thing is, it was never a law, and he's a former attorney general. He knows how laws are made." And it wasn't a law. It was an executive order. It was a, you know, it was a mandate. But again, it's not law. There's nothing in the New York State penal law that covers masks. Okay. However, Cumberland Farms, for instance, if they say you have to wear a mask inside our store, it's a store policy. So then you do have to wear a mask. If you don't follow store policy and now they're asking you to leave, now you're trespassing. So that's kind of how you catch them in that. Yeah. And then obviously they're just going to walk out and bring their business somewhere else. But people would always call and be like, oh, they're not wearing a mask. But like, well, there's nothing I can do with the mask. However, it, exactly. I can do stuff about them being in here and not following store policy. So, and, yeah. And and again, not to go down another the whole different road because I don't think we have time for it. But that kind of goes in the same vein of, like I said, of the freedom of speech thing that comes with people talking shit on Twitter and all that other stuff. Like, um, Let's see, I'm looking at your wife's TikTok right now, and she has 55.3 thousand followers uh, yeah. on TikTok. Um, you started her own business, you know, which is awesome and stuff like that, but she's very much outspoken on the, the right side of things. Um, oh, yeah. But I know she talked about, she brought that up in one of the posts about the, um, the freedom of speech deal. But again, that's... Like, like, you know, you say, oh, what about freedom of speech? Because I got banned on Twitter for talking shit. OK, well, that's not really that doesn't have anything to do with your freedom of speech. That's Twitter deciding, like, no, I don't want your shit on my platform and kicking you out. Well, I mean, you, you're right. I agree. Like, yeah, p- people have a warped uh, view of freedom of speech. You can't just run around and say whatever you want. However, like these. These platforms. 100 percent lean a certain way and people who lean the other way they feel you know like it's bullshit and you know we, when you kind of sell this whole thing like oh there's an open community for everyone but like now people are like sharing their beliefs and getting kicked off which i think mm-hmm. is crazy like if you're on there fucking threatening people acting like an asshole like that's one thing but people are sharing their concerns about covid is getting flagged as misinformation. It's getting like censored. It's like, okay, mm-hmm. come on. I, I think I think they put it almost where they have algorithms that just run and look. So I don't know if there's a real person like checking every post yeah. and you know confirming the. Oh, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, there's not enough to you know. There's so many people have social media making all these posts. I'm sure. Yeah, it is some computer generated thing, but yeah, and that's know. that's that's you know shit. You got to worry about that on that aspect. I but, mean, I, the one at, the one thing I always look at. Is um that horrible fucking comedian Kathy Griffin? Oh, Griffin, when she had when she, when she had, had when she had the Trump beheaded thing. Yeah, dude, if she wasn't leaning left and part of the media and you know celebrity and blah blah blah, if that was like Tim Allen that did that with Obama's head, because Tim mm-hmm. Allen's a right leaning celebrity. Yeah. Tim Allen would be fucking banished to the fucking moon, okay? Mm-hmm. Like, never mind getting kicked off anything. You never fucking see that guy. Yeah, that and that's uh, again. Kathy that's, Griffin is just fucking doing her damn thing. Yeah, you know? getting into politics and that kind of shit of it. I mean, yeah, that's that's like that. Like, so you know. that so so the whole freedom of speech aspect. That's where people get mad. And again, I agree with you with the whole like people really don't know what that means, freedom of speech. You know, they don't know what it implies because again, 
yeah, you have a business or you have a platform or you have a, you know, you run a magazine or a newspaper, like you're going to be able to censor shit you don't want because it's yours. Um, but I think the hypocrisy of stuff is what bothers people. Mm -hmm. And and that when I remember when that shit came out, because my, my in-laws are very right wing. Um, but I remember seeing that shit. And again, I'm not a Trump fan in the slightest, but that was not OK. I didn't think that was yeah. what that was. Cool but I don't think the outrage was right. And I think for the most part, people were, yeah, that's not OK. But the outrage wasn't enough because if it was someone else, they'd be going nuts. You know? Yeah. Yeah. There, There's. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree with all that. Yeah, there, yeah, there's definitely. And then also, too, when it comes in where the, the people that are the most vocal are the ones that get the, you know, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. So if it's 100 people that are fucking going insane, but there's 100,000 people that aren't saying shit, those 100 right. people are the ones that gets the attention. That's what the news is posting on. Again, yeah. a whole a whole fucking other trail the rundown of how fucked up the media is and all that kind of shit and like I said I think that's a, a great part of the dynamic that we have because we understand that shit and I think a huge thing like I mentioned before that that we touch on or where we always kind of come together is really just like minding your own fucking business yeah. like no matter what no matter what you feel or believe or this and that you are entitled to do and think and feel whatever the fuck you want but yeah. telling someone else and forcing someone else to do that that's that's where the line is drawn. That's the shit that doesn't fly no matter what side of the fucking fence you're on. Yeah. And the other thing, too, with Twitter, um, I saw a stat somewhere. I think like 6% of like American citizens have Twitter or some shit. Some like insanely huh. low percentage. But when you're on Twitter, sometimes it can be such a fucking cesspool. Like and oh, not even God. and never obviously politically because that's a hot button topic and everyone gets crazy about that. But like fucking – human rights dude meme pages just people making fun i'll see i'll see a sports argument just completely transform into like these two are just making fun of each how each other look and all yeah. this crazy shit and like wishing death on, it's a fucking complete cesspool so i have to sometimes step take a step back and be like twitter is not fucking reality although yeah. you're on it a lot you get your news from it and interact with people again like six or eight percent that, yeah, America that's such, has Twitter, that's, so it's like it is not a reflection of reality one bit. Yeah, that's such a funny point because yeah, every news outlet, everything fucking talks about. Oh, every post you go to is like, oh, well, here's people reacting to what they said yeah. about this, and it's here's here's a couple of tweets from people. Yep. Like that's the only fucking place anybody talks about anything because yeah. that's where people can see everything. And then yeah, there you go. There's such a small percentage of people that actually use Twitter that actually that are actually talking. And then it makes everybody think that this is how the whole fucking world feels. Yep. And then the other thing, too, uh, I'd like to use this uh, example for the whole COVID thing. Because, again, I had to, like, tell my mom this to calm her down. It's a sad thing we got going on in this country, and I'm sure me and you were guilty of it. Like, if you told me I'm 10 years old, right, and I'm eligible to vote, you know who I'm voting for? I'm voting for whoever Michael Jordan says to vote for, right? Because I'm influenced by my heroes yeah. and my idols, right? In this country, we worship celebrities. They like, worship them. Like, it's disgusting. And as you get – I think you can't appreciate that until you get older or realize it until you, you get older. Because now you're like, hey, I pay bills. I pay taxes, this, that, and the other thing. You know what he's – like, I'm just not in awe of, like, the pro athletes and the celebrities like I used to be. You know, because now it's like – you know, they, they're the same as me. They just have a special talent, special skill. Um, however, our celebrities are worshipped. What major celebrity has died from COVID? Has died? I don't I can't think of any. That's right. And I would tell my mom that. I'm like, it's so crazy and so bad, right? Not a single fucking celebrity. Let me, let me Google that for you. Yeah, you're going to have to Google. But that, this is my point. You have to even look it up. Yeah, and you know some folks. Like actually, I don't even know that many that have mentioned they've had. I know Idris Elba had it, but you never heard of it again. Right. Well, I remember the big one at first was Tom Hanks. He was like the first one to like have. Yeah. It. Was, oh, and everybody shit. lost. Everybody lost their yeah. shit. Like but no, not fun. Tom Hanks. Yeah. yeah. You know, and again, I it, it just to me like not a single fucking because I I think that's when like people will get really fucking worried. Like if Kevin Durant. You know, the fucking, you know, Brooklyn Nets superstar. If a guy like that got COVID and died, people would be like, holy fuck. 
Here we got a professional Ab- athlete. Absolutely true. It is like early 30s, fucking couldn't be more in shape. Now we got a serious problem on our hands. Yeah. You know, I'm looking again, at the rap. Keep- I'm looking at the rap.com from yeah. August 19th. Uh, 2021 celebrities who have died from the coronavirus. I can't name a single one of these people. Exactly. And again, I'm not demeaning them or trying to settle That's, their names. And again, uh, yeah. Not, but just the way we are in society, how we worship these celebrities, not a single one died, you know, a, a major one. Obviously, I'm, you, you see it on that website. So B listers, the, you know. But. Yeah, just folks I'm not familiar with, maybe other people are, like you said, unfortunately, not, not to diminish any anything, you know, their lives yeah. at all. You know, because they're gone, and that was like you said, the shit is real. It's not fake. People are dying yeah. from it. But yeah, the these are all stupid are, little uh, arguments I brought up and things to just convince yeah. my mom to just fucking relax because she was getting. <laughs> yeah, you know, I was worried for her. And then finally, when the vaccine became available, she took it. She finally chilled out. And I was happy for her, but mm. you know. Yeah, and that's like I said, my my dad was all for it because my dad's a he was a union iron worker for about forty years. He's a a diehard Democrat, all that shit. He was all about the um he was all about the vaccine but my See, mother that's thing you just said right there too and it shouldn't be that well you know, he was all about it because he's a democrat you know yeah but, but i don't, I, I don't know but what's said what's said and like i know you didn't mean anything about it but what's said is that's like what's become right it's become yeah. like this big political thing There's however like sand. and what's funny is like i do remind like i i again i I'm not vaccinated, but I'm not against the vaccine. And I mm-hmm. do argue with other Republicans when they get all fucking, they throw the tin foil hat on, they get nuts. I like, you know, I bring up the whole like, oh yeah, you know, like I poke fun of them. Like you don't know what's in your fucking flu vaccine yet. You're going to question this one. But yeah. one thing everyone needs to remember, the president who was in office that got this vaccine up and running was the ultimate Republican. And he, when he speaks, he encourages people to take the vaccine yeah so which i always is, found so interesting it shouldn't be a political thing because yeah. the fucking guy who's like the face of the republican party right now is telling you to go get the vaccine and yeah. he's the he was in office when joe biden and kamala harris they got jabbed while trump was sitting in the white house you know so because they got it done in december yeah and th- that's so why I always found my so point is that i'm not trump... trying to say like oh he's a hero for fucking figuring out or whatever i'm not saying that. i'm just saying like the face of the Republican Party is, you know, telling you to get it, you know, so I don't yeah. think it should be a political thing. And I, yeah, I absolutely agree. That's what I was trying to say. I, I don't understand why the line is drawn in the sand on it. And like you said, Trump has encouraged people to get it. And yeah. then so what are they? What are they like? Oh, well, fuck Trump. What does he know? Like, oh, wait, didn't you just like fucking live and die by his word for the last four years? Right. So I don't know. Uh, right. Yeah, I don't get that at all. That's a whole yeah, other. But, but like you just said, it why has it become political? Well, why has anything become political? Every fucking yeah. thing is political now. Yeah, yeah, we're divided more than ever, which is such a fucking shame. Yeah. I mean, but, but, but also too, it's funny you say that. And we just got done talking about how like Twitter is not reality. Like we are divided, but again, where are you getting most of that division from? Probably social media. Because when I go oh, out yeah. and about, when I go out and about, Dude, I don't see any division. Right? Well, honestly, I don't see that much anymore. Like maybe because again, I, I'm I'm more of a Democrat, so that's kind of what my feed was a little more filled with. I don't see a lot of political talk anymore. I mean, it, it's just not like the way it used to be. You know, the last fucking two years, it's like all that I saw. But now well, that's why I don't to do see with, it. Like the build up to an election, too. You know. Yeah. Yeah, partly. But but just the mudslinging like crazy, just talking about Trump and everything he did and this and that. And I don't say like I know there is shit out there with fucking Biden and certain things that he's done and the me- even just memes and stuff that people are putting out. But I don't feel like don't see it anywhere near as much as I did. Well, Trump- I mean, Trump dominated everything, man. I mean, you couldn't turn on your TV without seeing him. He's a lightning rod. You know, he's polarizing. Whether you that's, that's a good way to put it. I mean, yeah, that's what he is, man. He's just he's you know he's gonna make head- it, you know it's kind of like you know. <laughs> To make the comparison like when Rex Ryan was the Jets coach, you know, the yeah. Jets were constantly being talked about. Why? Because their fucking coach was outlandish and running his mouth, said like wild crazy. shit, did all types of stuff. And that was the same thing with Trump, you know. I mean, he's yeah. he's going to make a headline, you know. No, did you day. see? I don't know how true this part of it was, but there was some fight Saturday night, and the main event was Holyfield versus oh, yeah, Victor Belfort, yeah, Vitor yeah. Belfort. Uh, 
Yeah, and they that fucking poster I saw said full commentary from Donald Trump. Yeah, he. Uh, Did, I I want to say he was. Uh, yeah, he, he was like, like the, guest announcer. the play-by-play. Yeah, I, really? guess, I didn't watch it, but I heard he was like guest announcer or something. That's because earlier that day he was in New York at one of the precincts for because mm-hmm. it was the anniversary of nine eleven, and then he flew to this event and was like a guest commentator or something. That's fucking crazy. That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> those I can't. Those, those things are starting to take off. The oh, dude, it's box and shit. Jake, I can't. Stand Jake it. Paul fighting this guy, and then yeah. now MMA guys are crossing over. It's just it's fucking. Yep. Too much. It's goofy, but you know what? It fucking makes money, and that's all that really matters. So. Exactly. People are still paying fucking money to see it. Like everybody's hey, talking about these Jake Paul fights. Like I, I don't give a fuck at all. Hey, I mean the guys. Put, the guys putting on a show. I mean, he just beat you know a former MMA champion. You know, and Tyrone Woodley. Yeah. So clearly the guy's doing something right. You know, and I, I've i read like experts, you know, and analysts and former boxers, like opinions on him. They're like, hey, he's got some skill. So yeah, that's, so, yeah, I heard somebody saying that. Too. I think, I think most people are just like against the idea because yeah. it's goofy and he's like a YouTube star. And it's like, well, this guy never boxed his whole life and now he's coming into it and stealing from them and, you know. Yeah, again, just making money off of his name first, and then everything. Right. Else. But that's that's fucking show business, baby. Yeah. Uh, I, I think uh, one of the other fights, one of the undercard fights, was uh, Tito Ortiz versus Anderson Silva. Is that yeah, a boxing Anderson match? Anderson Silva fucking knocked him out. Did he? Nasty, I, oh yeah, nasty right hook took him out. I figured he won because they were talking about that could be Jake Paul's next fight. Yeah, maybe. And, and you I know what? Like Normally, I would say. Anderson Silva will destroy him. Now, Anderson Silva will destroy him in a fucking regular fight. Yeah. Because I'm sure Jake Paul, he cannot match Silva's jiu-jitsu and everything else. He brings his Muay Thai and stuff. But boxing, hey, maybe he's got a shot. Yeah. I'm not, I'm I'm yeah. not doubting him anymore, you know? It's wild boxing having that kind of, a, kind of a comeback. Because now it was everybody going from boxing to MMA. Because MMA, you could do a little bit of everything. But now we're going back to boxing and say, okay, well, what can you just do with your fists? Right. Well, it is a comeback, but it's not the traditional box comeback. It's not boxers. It's fucking these entertainers. Yeah. That are well, like making but, it it, but again, but it's MMA guys too. Oh yeah, no, right. Like I think I think I saw Mike Hunt was. But uh, my one point of is, too. it's not traditional boxers that are doing it. You know, yeah. it's people from other walks of life. You know, I mean, MMA is kind of in the same, you know, realm. But but yeah, you got YouTube stars fighting MMA guys and. Oh, the, all these like old retired boxers coming out. I mean, Oscar Del Hoya was supposed to fight Belfort, but he had yeah. he got COVID, so he yep. got pulled from it last minute. Yeah, because does, does he run? Isn't it like his promotion too? Is it? Yeah, yeah it's uh, Golden Boy Promotions. Okay, got, yeah. and he 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 promotes and you know has legit boxers, you know, actual pro boxers. But yeah. Mm-hmm. But he sees where the money's at, so he jumped in on this too. Yeah, fucking a. All right, man. Well, that's uh, that's been a little over an hour, I think, and it's quarter after eleven, and I'm fucking dead ass tired, and I'm sure I'll be up so, at two so o'clock in the we, morning for my kids. Now and, that we got the like fucking COVID conversation out of the way, we could fucking yeah, because that had to happen. Because I don't know who anyone who doesn't have to have a talk about COVID. It's just Absolutely. dominated everyone's life for the last year and a half. So. Yeah, there's a a Sloan Kettering uh COVID or a Sloan Kettering cancer podcast. That else too, because uh, my wife is going through cancer treatments right now, and of course, one of those episodes are cancer and COVID. What do you do? Right. Like everybody has to touch on that shit, and I yeah. knew we would, and we we kind of touched a, we kind of like sprinkled in some things that I'm sure we'll cover, you know, as as time goes on, all those different fucking yeah. aspects of it. But yeah, exactly, covering the ground on it. Like we didn't even mention the fact that you know you're you're a former marine, and all yeah. the other kind of shit you've been through. So yeah, there there's so many aspects of it that we'll cover and. Yeah, but like I said, the, the 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 COVID talk, it had to be done, had to get out of the way, and and I think even saying, even getting each other's opinions on where we stand on it says so much, because yeah. like you said, there there's people who, there's people who are like, fuck that, I'm not getting it, this and that, and then there's plenty of people who think COVID is a fucking hoax, and all yeah. kinds of crazy shit going on out there. But from someone who went through it, and you know your beliefs about things and how you feel about things, and then the way I feel about things, and so. You know, we just touched on it and get that different dynamic, and that's what it's about. Now we just need to come up with a name. 
Mm. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, now that we talked about it a little bit, I kind of, I mean, I don't know if it'd be the name of the episode or the name of the show, like Mind Your Fucking Business or something like that. Yeah, which kind of be, kind of be funny. Like if you li- you're listening to a show where people are telling you to mind your own fucking business. Yeah. It's kind of ironic. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Irony like, is Mind bad. your business, but listen to my podcast. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Mind your business, but listen to my business. Yeah, there we go. Maybe that's what we'll do. And we'll talk about wrestling and Star Wars and all that other kind of shit that, that oh, brings yeah. us together. Yep. Fuck yeah. Yeah, yep. now the serious shit's out of the way. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like I said, I got a list of fucking topics. Let's see, even just today, because now I've started with like, okay, if we're going to talk today, let me just start making some notes on what's going on. Uh, the lock and keys. Like, it's funny, too, because it's like it's a little bit of you and it's a little bit of me. Like yeah. the lock and, key, lock and key season two trailer came out. I don't know if you checked out the first season of Lock and Key on Netflix. I, I did not. No. <laughs> I missed it's, that one. It's, it's, on it's, my, th- it's on my to-do list. <laughs> well, I can, I can tell you that if I gave you the comic book to read, you would enjoy it. Yeah. Even if you, I know you don't like comic books. I mean, you're, you're into Marvel. Well, I don't dislike. Shit, like, I don't dislike. That's, yeah. But, but you don't read fucking you know, you right, don't read no, comic yeah, books. Right, no. But if you read Lock and, Rock and, Lock and Key is written by Joe Hill, who's actually st- one of Stephen King's sons, and it's the best comic book I've ever read. The show, I really don't think, does it justice. Oh, yeah. Uh, I've, I've heard you talk about it for years. Yeah. You know, the, the comic book is fantastic. Crazy. Yeah. Um, Norm MacDonald dying, obviously, was the people posting so many fucking videos yeah. about him. He's, and what's he's fucked up is, funny, man. you know, everyone I fucking talk to about it, or like whoever broke the news, like, oh, Norm McDonald died. The next follow up question was like, was it COVID? You know, like, oh, yeah. this is where yeah. I'm at now. Yeah, no. I, and I asked you, I was like, oh, what happened? I genuinely asked me. I wasn't yeah. fishing for a COVID response. And then when you said cancer, I didn't even know he had cancer. No, I don't think anybody knew he had cancer. Yeah. He kind of kept it. I think Anthony Jeselnik, who's another comedian, he yeah. tweeted out that Norm McDonald dying of silently dying of cancer and not telling anybody is the most Norm McDonald thing ever. Yeah. Well, same with like Black Panther. Yeah, I had no fucking idea. He he filmed Black Panther while he had cancer. Fucking no idea. No idea. Yep. Yeah. Um, Anthony he was another had, one. He died suddenly. It was like, oh man, was it the COVID? You know? But yeah, yeah. yeah. No, like, any, oh shit. Anybody yeah, around this know. time, that's what happens. Yeah. Um, Anthony Mackie uh, is cast in the Twisted Metal. I think it's a TV show on HBO Max, really? like based off the based off the old PlayStation game. That's weird. I know. I don't know who he'll be. Like how? There's no dialogue in that game. There's no story. Well, there. There. Did you play Twisted Metal Black on PS2? See, now you're getting crazy. No, I played the original <laughs> Twisted Metal with the, the ice original cream. Yeah. Oh, oh, Sweet Tooth. He's in all yeah. of them. But the um the the Twisted Metal. I know that I think there's ones that came after it. But Twisted Metal Black had a lot of cutscenes. Like when you pick a character, you got an introductory okay. cutscene, you got like a mid story cutscene, and then you got the final cutscene. So I mean, I think it, it could be a pretty cool story. I don't know who Anthony Mackinney's gonna play. He's probably gonna be like that. Uh, I forget what what they call that character who introduces everything. He's probably gonna like a cre- a custom. An original character for the TV show that like introduces everything, and maybe Sweet Tooth will be the fucking big bad. Who knows? Yeah. Um, and then the last note I had for today, which I actually mentioned just before we started talking, was uh, that they announced that Funko Pop is going to be doing pops with a purpose, and the first ones coming out are going to be uh, Marine Corps pops. There's wow. actually one who, who looks like, yeah, there's actually one who looks like you and is dressed blues. Nice. Um, and then there's a few, a um, lot, lot of diversity in the, the characters and stuff like that. And then just in there, their camis. Very did, cool. I say that, that, did I say that right? Their camis? Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I remember going out when, when I visited you, uh, when you came back from, not from Cuba, was it Okinawa? When I went out and visited you when we were going to pick you up the first time. And we were all barbecuing or fucking just sitting by the fire outside. And I kept trying to say, I kept trying to say cap. But I forgot it was cover. And I was trying to be oh, cool yeah, and say, yeah. call my hat my cover. And everybody was like fucking laughing. Like, ah, he says cap. Like, because they yeah. say that shit in certain parts of the country. Because, you know, because that's part of the thing, too. You got to meet guys from all over the country. And they say, like, yeah. fucking pop, pop and soda and shit like that. Oh, yeah. So, so say, one, think, one thing that's funny you mentioned that is people. The most interesting one and the stupidest one I ever heard of is people from Tennessee. They call soda Cokes. Coke. 
Cokes. Yeah. Like what kind? Cokes. Like they'll go to a restaurant and be like, "What kind of cokes do you have?" Like it, the idiot. It, it's <laughs> soda. Coke is the brand name. You fucking <laughs> schmuck. Oh, dude, this one guy, my buddy Corey. He's That's from so Tennessee. weird. He'd be, Hey, what kind of Cokes you have? I'm like, bro, they have Coke products. They have Diet Coke, regular Coke, like Dr. Pepper. He's like, no, like soda. I'm like, no, it's soda. It's not Cokes. That just drove me fucking nuts. That's all. I know. That, that shit's fucking funny. Yeah, and then, I mean, that's a, a cool thing you got to experience was you got to, uh, you know, talk about, you know, you got what to learn it? those different is it, things. Is it lunch meat or is it cold cuts? To me? Yeah. Oh, it's cold cuts. It's fucking cold cuts. Yeah, or, well, lunch meat. a huge one that we deal with. I mean, again, I, I, I lived in Jersey probably the majority of my life. I, well, no, nah, not yet. Now, I lived in New York, I guess, the majority of my life, but not too far from Jersey. But it's Taylor Ham to me. Yeah. And there's fucking plenty of people down in South Jersey who's, who will call it pork roll. And, pork roll, oh, yeah. Fuck that. Yeah. Um, yeah, here's, if you can see, there's one of them right there. Oh, wow. Standing at attention. Can you pre-order those or not? Yeah, uh, this is at Big what's, Bad Toy Store dot com. Uh, Big, Big Bad, Bad Toy Store. Store. Yeah, there's a yeah male three Funko Pop military pop pop with a purpose. This was ten hours ago because uh, they're talking about it on Reddit. Yeah, but yeah, the, I saw the picture of the whole lineup. Let's see if I can find the picture of the lineup. Oh, this is a cool site. I've never been on here. Yeah, they have tons of cool shit on there. Yeah, here's just it just says Marine, and there's uh in the dress blues. Very cool. Yep. And you could buy uh, right from the site. Yeah, or I think pre-order now, and I think it's gonna say. Oh, here's the, here's the lineup, where there's uh yeah there's male and female. I think there's three female. Yeah, three females and two males. No, three females in camouflage, two males in camouflage, and one male in the dress blues. Yeah, there's the the lineup right there. Very cool. Very cool. Yep. Um. <clears throat> all right. Is it uh? Is it chopped meat or uh? Ground beef. It's ground beef, man. Really, it's chopped meat to me. Really, there you Melissa go. We, found, we found too. one. Yeah, it's always been chopped meat to me. That's funny. Yeah, it is funny. I wonder where like the difference comes from, especially living in the same area. Yeah, another huge one too that we get in our area is um is the night before Halloween. What do you call that? Yeah, goosey night. Goosey night, yeah. yeah. No, what my mom always called it Goosey night. I for, I think I forget what Crystal calls it. I think it's mischief night. Mischief um, night, gate night, hell night. Yeah, weird ass shit. Yeah, but yeah, go, it was understand. Goosey night to me, and like it's funny. It's funny you said that because nobody else I know other than my mother calls it Goosey. Well, night. both being from Green Bay Lake, you know, I mean. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess that's what everybody in Green Bay Lake called it, right? Yeah. All right. Well. My cocktail being empty tells me that it's time to to wind it down. All right. I'll have to add some editing and all this kind of shit and post. There's a there's a fucking app that makes it so easy to post a, a podcast all over the place. But now we're gonna have to create the Twitter account and all that kind of shit and start drumming up a following. I made a ton of friends uh, trying to promote my wrestling comic, so oh, that nice. should help. And and it's funny too. I've got like a wrestling and comic following and friends, and then you've got yeah. sports and shit from all the stuff that you communicate with on. Twitter, so great yeah. dynamic, man. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And plus, because you know we fucking hardly talk and hardly see each other, so this would be a good shit for all that too. Yeah, no, for sure, absolutely. Yeah. All right, brother. Well, let's call it a night. We'll try to schedule for something for next week, and then we'll just we'll, we'll do it again. All right, man. Sounds good. All right, dude. Have a good night. All right, bro. Later. All right, man. Bye.